Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, there's some great news for those of us Linux Mint users. As of yesterday when I'm recording this, so the 25th, Clem has approved for stable release the three desktop environments of Linux Mint 20. So you can actually still find the uh, release notes up there. I've not seen them drop at the time I'm recording this, but I assume that these drops are coming very, very quickly. And uh, let's go ahead and just have a brief look at the release notes for Cinnamon, um, REL underscore Ulana underscore Cinnamon or Mate or XFCE.php will get you uh, the release notes if they're not showing up on the blog post yet. And uh, what they're doing here, I, I got to say, the great thing about Linux Mint is it is such a good operating system that also listens to their users, which is amazing with how many users that they have. We're going to explain that in a bit. But going through, we actually have a starting with the Chromium and the Snap Store situation. And this is an interesting one as we're watching the development. Some people are saying, this is unnecessary drama. No, it's not. Understand this. Ubuntu Base is now pushing a proprietary store that they are not auditing the code for the applications they're in. And the applications therein are not necessarily put together with the knowledge or approval of the people who wrote those applications. Some of them are of the team for that store. Some of them are random people on the internet. And that's the fundamental concern with the Snap Store. Now, the people that are yelling and saying, well, they're taking away the choice. No, they're not. Ubuntu is the one taking away choice. Ubuntu is the one that is saying, you are using Snaps, period. What we have here is if you follow this link over here, they explain again the criticism, the concerns that they have. He's even talked in the past about what it would take to be able to approve Snap for it. And uh, apparently they are doing some discussion. So they talk about the fact that it is disabled and how do you install Snap? These three lines right here. Put these three lines right here inside of your uh, terminal and you will now be able to install snaps, period. That's not removing choice and that's not making it too difficult for a new user either. But ask me this, if I want to use Ubuntu and I don't want to use snap, do I have a choice? Well, it's their operating system. They can do what they want. But the question is, we're talking about choice. Linux Mint gives you the choice. If you want to use snaps, follow those lines of code. If you don't, you don't. We also have detailed instructions here for Chromium. And uh, I think what I might do is do a separate video on looking at this. So what they're doing is inside of uh, the first line here is if in Linux Mint 18 and 19. The problem is the Ubuntu, the new Ubuntu base will automatically install Snap. And that's the concern that, that we have. And so they give us several ideas. We have a Chromium beta. So this is like a pre-release Chromium information for adding a PPA for that. We have a development version. We have the ungoogled Chromium here. And you can also go back and use the one from Debian by calling in your Debian sources in here. And like I said, I think I might do a separate video just on doing these. And then you need to do some uh, preferences and importing a few keys. This is a little bit more advanced, but they also give us alternatives to Chromium. Hey, Google Chrome makes it easy. We have Firefox. Or, hey, you can enable the Snap Store uh, as per the other instruction and simply install Chromium through that. So those are some of the things that we have seen. Everything else in here, there's some information about virtual boxes, which I'm using in virtual boxes. Here's uh, most cases, home directory encryption is slower than full disk encryption. Uh, the move to system D caused a regression in eCrypts, which is responsible for mounting unmounted. Uh, because of this issue, please be aware that Mint 20 and newer releases, your encrypted home drive is no longer unmounted on logout. They have a bug uh, session of that. You can enable guest additions if you want, but the option is disabled by default. So if you do want to enable it, you can go ahead and do that. There's information for touchpad drivers, information on Wine, 
and there's you can see several other issues and and items and tips inside of here so definitely you are going to want to read through this if you're going to be using this in a production machine but let's go ahead and have a look what the operating system itself looks like all right so here is the first boot after installing the system and what you're going to spot here, I alluded to this earlier where I said, hey, they actually listen to their users. Well, it turned out that in the beta, they removed the panel layout option to go back to the traditional or go with the modern. And apparently a lot of people really wanted that traditional panel. So this is a distro that actually listens to their user base. They went ahead and added the panel choices back in. So if you do like that old traditional way of doing your panels, hey, you got it. Look at that. It's there. Uh, so we have that as an option now, which is totally awesome. Love that. And I do really like this, except I do actually like the panel a little bit larger than the old traditional one. Uh, but that's actually good. We have those options. Of course, we now have the new option to choose your colors. Of course, they were talking earlier about having more vibrant, bright colors inside of these. Uh, after doing some beta testing and user feedback, once again, the user feedback wasn't particularly impressed and said, nah, just keep it kind of the way it was. And so they did. But we do have this new desktop color option here that will toggle light or dark mode and whatever options that you want for your colors. So you can just go ahead and and just have your, your theming matching exactly what you want. This is absolutely glorious, very nice. We still have our system snapshots, driver managers, update manager, there's nothing new inside of here down to the bottom. A couple of changes that they made down here in the task panel, of course, the system information no longer is the more scary triangle, it now just looks like a clipboard with the exclamation mark in it. We're gonna have the same basic information in there. Of course, your system snapshots Snapshots is now inside of here instead of in the update manager, so you don't get constant prompts if you're not particularly interested in that. Here, there's language packs. Yeah, we're going to ignore that. And then here's set up your uh, system restore, so you can ignore that as well, or you can go ahead and launch time shift. Our update manager has an icon notification now instead of having the old um, the old blue. Uh, indicating it needed an update or a green check mark. We now just have an, an icon notification. Some people like the icon notification. Some people are not quite as concerned. Again, on your first boot, it's going to give us a prompt to update our drivers uh, to a, or excuse me, update our sources to a local mirror. I'll just go ahead and ignore that for now. And we can see any updates in here that we, we might want to update as well. Uh, of course, a while back, Linux Mint did do away with the uh, prioritizing one to five. Some people said it was confusing. I really liked it, but uh, they did do away with it. But if there is a particular package that you would like to hold back for whatever reason, you can now actually come over here, right click it, and you can ignore uh, the current update for the package or ignore all future updates for the package. So I actually do this on Firefox right now where I hold back the Firefox uh, package because I can't see on that new um, URL bar. But um, I think I'm probably forced with it on this version if I were to install something fresh. So I'll just have to use my, uh, my mad skills to uh, fix that. All right, you can also have a look still at your Linux kernels. Be careful in here, but uh, you can actually see we have... Uh, we're running Linux kernel 5.4. Uh, it looks like that's all they have installed here is the 5.4. And uh, you can see that uh, this one is superseded, so you're going to want to run the updates. And I did see the kernel update in there, which is rolling that up. If I can find the kernel update, I saw it as I was scanning through there real quick. That should be in here somewhere. All right, so there is our update systems. So we have our new, our old traditional panel. It's kind of behaving the way it used to. Let's go ahead and click that twice. Just make sure that we actually do get two instances of Firefox popping up. Hopefully we do, and that's exactly what we get. So it is actually setting up exactly the way that we want. So if I if you do actually like your panels a little bit bigger though, and I actually have an entire uh, videos on doing more things with your panel, like I actually do like the larger size of the panel. So this guy here, actually the way they're doing it now, it looks like they're kind of, they've reverted 
to using the modern panel. They just happen to have a script which takes the modern panel and turns it into the old one, which is, this is exactly the same thing that I actually had a video about how to fix. They're now doing it automatically. So kudos to you, Linux Mint, listening to your users and actually doing really good things to help your users out. Like I said, I do like it a little bit larger, but all the rest of this, I, I really like it. The only other new thing in here, of course, we covered it inside of our uh, beta video, is we do have the Warpinator installed. Now, the Warpinator, you can install on anything else in your network. It basically behaves as a local network sharer. So right now, it's not going to find anything else because I don't have any other computers on the network. But if I actually just turn my... Uh, Turn my head over here and I can boot up Warpinator on my Arch machine right next to me here. And if I do that, then it should automatically update here in a few moments to show that you're going to find yet another computer. I'm going to go ahead and leave that over there at the side. As far as our other options in here, most of everything else is going to be the same. There you go. So there's my Arch computer. So I can add files in here. I can drive files on. I can open the folder, save files off. So Warpinator actually works fairly well. All right, so your theming, of course, our theming is, is the same. It's just if you want to do your overall theming, then you can actually just run that welcome screen again for your good, consistent light theme, dark theme, making sure everything is, is there. But you can actually override various portions of your theme like you always could. Nothing else is really changed inside of there. Also, inside of our software manager, we're going to see some updated versions of software, but what we're not going to see is snap packages. We do still have flat packs in here. So, and uh, Linux Mint has always done a much better job of identifying what's what. So, here's our, uh, this one should be our non flat pack version. Let's see what version we have here. So, 4.19.03 Ubuntu. This guy here should be the latest, which is, I think, like a 2004 or something. So 2004. Um, this one here does look like it's going to be a much older version. This is why I have a problem with some of the snaps and flat packs because they're not actually updating some of the older applications. So like this one, you sh they should have updated this up to... A little bit more. I guess it is. It must, must be a 19 version. I'm not going to go ahead and install it now. Um, but still, inside the repositories, we do have the good flat pack separated out from the uh, repository. Everything else is going to be working out very well. You have all of the system tools that you need for a complete operating system. We now have the, the easy theming options. We now have the Warpinator options. So, I mean, I completely agree. If you guys did not watch uh, recently, um, uh, is it Infinity Galactic, I think? Um, he did a fabulous video here also on Linux Mint looking at like it, it sometimes people don't realize how thoroughly complete Linux Mint is. And for a large distro that still listens to its user base and makes quick changes on the fly, like from the beta to the release, adding the ability back in to put your panel. This is why I recommend Linux Mint. Am I concerned about this snap situation? I think Linux Mint did it exactly. There was a package manager that was uh, that was violating the philosophy of Linux. They removed the ability for it to install itself, and they give you the options on how to install it should you want to. Let's have a look at the wallpapers they're giving us. Um, we always like to look at Linux Mint has some of the best wallpapers. So let's go ahead and just do uh, if I can make. I don't think I can make that any smaller. I can't, but. Let's have a quick look at some of our wallpapers. Very beautiful wallpapers in Linux Mint. Ooh, that one's bright. And there's the new wallpapers that we have. Of course, we have our um, we have our Linux Mint wallpapers as well. Or you can just go ahead and use your own images or add your own folders down there. So there is uh, Linux Mint 20 in a nutshell. This is just becoming so amazing. Uh, once again, kudos to the Linux Mint team. They have pulled together 
one of the best desktop environments, one of the best operating systems, and put in just enough tools to make it feel complete, yet not bloated. They've listened to their users. They've given us the things that we've wanted. This is just an excellent distribution, and I think that uh, everyone should check this out, particularly if you are fishing for a new Linux distribution. So uh, with that, there is my look at Linux Mint 20. So that will be dropping here very soon. If you can't find the download links, just keep on checking back at the Linux Mint website. They will be there very soon. Thanks for coming along. Let me know your favorite part about Linux Mint 20 in the comments down below.